Welcome, everyone. You are tuning in to Engaging Walk. My name is Drake. And my name is Ruby. We believe in the power of walking together and talking together. It's a simple act to stay connected and movement is key. This week, we will discuss the concept of going on an engaging walk as a couple and how you and your significant other can take that time to make deep connections. That's right. Before we start, we would love to introduce each other a little bit to you. My name is Drake. Um, as Ruby said, that's my wife. I'm her husband. I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts, and went to school there, grew up there with a Greek family. And, um, you know, some of my favorite things growing up were skateboarding with my friends and playing guitar also with my friends and not so much into school. <laughs> but um, after I graduated from college, I moved to uh, Los Angeles and played music there. And then I've been active duty in the military for about a little over five years. Pretty cool. And uh, you want to tell us about yourself, Ruby? Sure. So my name is Ruby and I'm originally from Vietnam and I moved to California, I think around five years. And um, I work in education. And uh, yeah, I love volunteering and work with kids and... I love worshiping God, you know? Yeah, pretty much that's it about me. Yeah, so Ruby and I have been married for about six months now, and uh, we have all sorts of things that we do together, plans, events, um, interests that we share, values that we share, and all that makes our marriage meaningful and worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that we like to do is just go out on walks together. That's right. It's um, like we just said in the intro, it's a simple act. It's just a matter of like, hey, I'm home from work. Uh, Ruby's home from work. We're, you know, we're busy, two busy people, but, you know, we always try to make the time to go out and just go outside together. Mm -hmm. You know, depending on where you're from, it might not be so nice as to like where we are That's in Southern right. California. We are spoiled. We're definitely <laughs> spoiled, but... You know, I know growing up in Boston, when it was cold, like I'd still try to go out on walks when it was cold. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you think about that connection time that we have on our engaging walks? And what is a, what, what category, what separates a, an engaging walk from just a regular walk? Well, I mean, like we start just walk together and then, you know, as usual, we start talking. And I feel like as the more we talk, the more... You know, I get to know you and in different ways. And um, and on top of that, because, you know, as we walked, you know, our bodies move, move, you know, and then that's where, I don't know, I just like releasing out my stress and at the same time, I have really deeper connections with you through questions and intentional questions. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and know each other even more. So I think it's, it's just not walking, but it's also intentional. Getting to know the other makes it different. Yeah, Ruby and I have been dating for a while, but we, you know, we've been married for only six months. But you know, we still have so much to learn about each other. Yeah, and I think I think what during our dating time, um, you just asked me, "Hey, do you want to walk um, within uh, within my neighborhood and then to get boba?" And I think that's where you know we realize that, hey, walking is something that we share together and we enjoy, yeah, we enjoy it very much. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we'd, we'd like to go on walks wherever, wherever if like we're on a road trip somewhere or if we're, you know, on the weekend, mm -hmm. we try to find some new place or, or even just around the neighborhood to just go out and enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the weather yeah, and just get out and get moving. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's definitely, and I think one of the things that helps is like you don't have to like look at the person. You can kind of just, <laughs> you know, keep your eyes out and look around, look about. You don't have to like stare at each other. Look at nature, enjoying, you know, flowers, birds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the other day we, or it was, oh, it was a lot more than uh, the other day, was we saw these parrots oh, flying the parrots. around. Yeah. It was crazy. There was, yeah, it's kind of wild to see just wild parrots run, like flying around in Southern California, but apparently there's a lot of them in their neighborhood. Yeah, it's not like one or two. I thought like, because as far as I thought, it's just like a normal bird, you know, typical birds in the neighborhood. But then 
the sounds di- was different. And our neighbor was like, oh, it was six parrots <laughs> next to, uh, yeah, just next to the tree next to us. Was... Yeah, we, we definitely kind of ruined it for him because I wanted to bring one of them home as a pet. <laughs> So he, well, while I was like trying to beckon them to come with us, they all flew away. <laughs> but yeah, we have parrots at our neighbor pet. They was yeah, they will fly around. The other day we saw another two in our parking lot. So we'll see. Maybe one day. And we're going on that engaging walk. I remember that was during that time we were talking about actually one of the, the one of the main tops, topics of that discussion was schedules. Mm-hmm. And um, schedules is a is a difficult thing for us to manage. Uh, I imagine it's the same with many other people as well, but particularly for us because there's just so many things that we want to do. Uh, not just this podcast, but uh, work, worship, um, balancing that, Bible study, uh, activities, going out on date nights. It's almost as if I wish sometimes that there was just an extra day in the week <laughs> that nobody else knew about. That, that there was an eighth day in the week that only me and Ruby had access to. So we can catch up on all the things that we want to do in our lives. And um, But lately I've been finding that, you know, one of the dis- things that we discussed recently that is analogous, analogous to our lives is this idea of that I was thinking about when we were having breakfast is that your lives together is essentially like a different component or a new component. You know, we the Bible talks about the two becoming one. Mm -hmm. And what does that actually mean? Well, it's almost like you, you both become a new person together. Mm -hmm. And, but at the same time, there's still the individual that you have to bring to the table. Yeah. And um, there's no substitute for your individual self, even if you're having great union and bringing yourselves together. So it's almost as if like you have to fill your own cup to fill up the mutual bowl that you share. Mm-hmm. And and the mutual bowl is a covenant that the, the, the two become one. And to maintain that is difficult because your cup needs to be filled. And... What fills your cup up? And then how do you bring that excess to the bowl mm-hmm. so that your your marriage is meaningful, your marriage is, is filled, it has uh, life and activities, and you're, and you're deepening that connection and not staying stagnant. Because mm-hmm. if you're not growing, then, you know, you're losing or you're not, or, or you're, you know, in atrophy, I guess would be the, a good word for it. But if you're not growing together, then... You know, you might be growing apart. Yeah. So um, even as for me, when, you know, I tr- before getting married, I try to be a powerful person, you know, where you repair yourself to the most. <laughs> I'm a per- perfection- perfectionist. Mm-hmm. So uh, I try my best to, like, repair myself before marriage and all those skills, skill sets. Um, but then when, you know, when we get married, the Bible said, to become one and so I always have a question it's like am I like the Ruby in the singlehood disappear now I become Ruby and Drake where is the balance because you know some of my mentors say like oh no you still have to maintain your personal walk with the Lord then you can spill out but then it never I I, I don't I, I don't have the answer until like um then that morning when we have an analogy two cups and a bowl like that's that's right like we had to fill up our personal cup cup so that with love was you know um kindness faith. goodness faith your activities your the, interests the, yeah that 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 you continue that I continue to build myself up in the Lord and also like who are who who he want me to be you know the calling that he's called me to be like and then that will be overflowing into the cu- the cup, to the bowl of you know the covenant that Drake and Ruby comes together, and then um, and this is how you know we filled up our our marriage with joy, love, and peace, and 
yeah, it just come back to being a powerful person and a whole powerful person and combined together as two powerful whole people. Yeah. And then some, and this might seem a little um, contradictory, but sometimes the best way to fill your cup up is by letting some things out. So, you know, and at least for me, like I had to think about like, okay, what are, what are the priorities? What are some things that I got to remove from my life in order so that I can bring my whole self to the marriage and mm-hmm. to, and to filling up the bowl? Yeah. You know, so... That might be a struggle that many people have, if you can relate, you know, uh, leave comments or, or have that discussion, mm-hmm. at least with yourself or with your partner about like, hey, what are some things that you as an individual need to remove from your life in order to, to bring your whole self to your relationship or your marriage? Um, it could be things that are holding you back, like, uh, you know, video games or... Um, watching too much TV. Um, what are some other examples? Well, I mean, like this. I mean, like I one of the courses that I learned is from you know Danny Silk, and the um, pretty much our you know foundation of my marriage is from that course, which is determine the relationship. And he said like whatever that you do, is it for connections or disconnection? You know, like. If, let's say, am I reading this um, book uh, about certain things? Am I bringing that to the table? Or was it my watching TV time taking me away from the relationships or connect me with the relationship, you know? Things like that. So just keep it that questions back in your mind, in your head. Like, is this questions, is this activities bring me to the relationship or disconnect me from the relationship yeah he had a pretty good example we went to a uh, marriage conference with him not that uh over the weekend over the previous weekend and he um he had a a pretty good example or analogy about like your drop menu Mm -hmm. so you open up your drop menu on a computer and how many like accessories are there Mm -hmm. he says like you know the more you get through life the fewer things that are in your drop menu and I think that that's true. Like when you're, you know, he kind of gave the example of like uh, not uh, having too many things in your drop menu is a method in which you can like use to avoid responsibility because you can't be pinned down to one thing. Yeah. Um, but as you get older and as things become more and more important and other things, you have to make time for those things. And you have to let go of, of things that aren't important. Mm-hmm. And um, and it's not just one side. It's had to be both sides. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it's Danny Silks. If you guys are interested, he has tons of good stuff. Yeah, Kylo, keep your love on. Not Kylo Ren, but <laughs> keep yeah. your love on Kylo. And yeah, um, yeah he has uh, great courses. One that we used... Uh, while I was on deployment and we used that to keep connected and to actually build the foundation of our marriage as Ruby mentioned was to find the relationship or DTR mm-hmm. and that's just uh, something I think a lot of people can benefit from which is having a, a goal of the relationship not just getting into a relationship to get into a relationship because you feel lonely or whatnot but having an actual goal mm-hmm. and the goal being marriage and establishing what your values and what's important to you ahead of time Mm -hmm. and or to each other and having that mutual understanding so for this week i think is this good for you know is a opportunity for you and your partner or your significant one just to ask yourself like what is what is um what do you need to do to build up you know to fill your cup with so that you can together feel the bowl that you know your life together and i think that is um maybe you, you guys can you know pick a place to walk maybe downtown maybe um you know to the beach or if you live in california there's tons of sweet beautiful you know trails and beaches and you know or yeah just take a walk and then ask yourself or and then your partner about 
two cups and a bowl analogy. Yeah. One question that Ruby used to ask me often was like, uh, do, is your, is your love basket full? Mm -hmm. Like what can I do to f help fill up your love basket? Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's pretty much like the same idea. Like what, what can you do for your partner? Like what does your partner need to do for themselves? And then taking it, take a look inside and say like, Hey, am I bringing everything I, I got to the bowl? What else can I bring? What do I need to let go of? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. And then, so next week we're also going to talk a little bit more about asking those intentional questions to your partner and figuring out like how you can get to know them deeper from asking them an intentional question. That's not, Hey, how was your day? Or how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. You know, those, those questions are important. Not saying that they're not, you know, it's always great to have that check-in time. And, um, but there's, always room for more intentional questions that get to deeper connection. Yeah. And um, is there anything you want to add before we sign off? Well, don't forget to tell us how it goes uh, with, you know, two cups and a bowl analogy. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Leave comments and all that. All right. So with that, we just wanted to thank you for tuning in. Our very first. Awesome. Yeah, first of many. And uh, <laughs> we hope that you... And take our engaging, our engaging walk, and make uh, make this your own as well. Yeah. So uh, stay tuned for next week's episode when we will discuss those ideas of asking those intentional questions. And um, thank you, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for having a good week. This is Drake and Ruby signing off. <laughs>